Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Death Row Executions. Today's segment is a sentence to death segment on Carl Wayne Bunchen, who was on death row for killing a police officer. He is 78 years old and is currently the oldest person on Texas's death row. Carl Wayne Bunchen was born on March 30, 1944, in Harris County, Texas. He had at least two siblings, a twin named Kenneth and a younger brother named Bobby. Carl's parents were married and started having children at a very young age. Carl's mother was 15 when she married. When Carl turned eight, his family moved to a bad area of Houston, Texas. Carl's father was mean and assaulted everyone in the family, including animals. He also required Carl and his brothers to work for him at his mechanic shop. Because the boys were required to work, school was not a priority, and Carl dropped out in sixth or seventh grade. During one incident, Carl's father ended up knocking his mother's teeth out with a beer bottle. Carl mustered up enough courage and assaulted his father and demanded that he never lay a hand on his mother again. He also threatened to kill his father that day. The threat did not work and his father was back to his old ways in no time. On another occasion, Carl's brother Bobby got in trouble by their father and his arm was broken in five places. He was also hit with a baseball bat a few years later. They also witnessed their father commit crimes that were traumatic. One day, their father killed a man over a dispute concerning a car repair bill. Instead of being shielded from the crime, Carl's brother Bobby was forced to help clean up any traces of evidence and or DNA. They had also seen their father have sexual relations with the family's dog and pet pig. Being no stranger to death and crime, Carl started his criminal life early. His first arrest and conviction came in 1961 when he was just 17 years old after being busted for theft. Over the years, Carl racked up 13 felony convictions for crimes ranging from theft, sexual assault, and drug possession. When Carl was 27 years old, his twin brother Kenneth was killed. Kenneth was also a career criminal and was shot eight times by two Houston police officers in April of 1971 after committing theft. This incident caused hate and rage towards police to grow for Carl, and he swore that he would one day get his revenge. In 1965, he was convicted of assault to murder an Alabama police officer, so he was no stranger in attempting to kill an officer before. It didn't matter the time or state. In May of 1989, Carl was released from prison after serving only 13 months out of a 15-year sentence for sexually assaulting someone. Question, what do you think about multiple felons continuously being released early and not serving out their full prison sentences? It has been documented that while in prison, he was busted for having a shank on his persons. He was also caught using his brother's birth certificate in order to obtain a visit with his ex-wife who also happened to be in jail. Carl was temporarily out of prison because of a furlough, but a jail official discovered his true identity and returned him to prison. A friend claimed that Carl always kept a gun on him and said he would kill an officer before he returned to prison ever again. The behavior that continued into his 40s did not seem like behavior that would change for the better. A month after being released from prison on June 27, 1989, Carl was in the passenger seat of a vehicle his friend John Killingsworth was driving. Officer James Irby, who was patrolling on his motorcycle, pulled the vehicle over and instructed the driver to exit the car. John followed commands and the two began talking to one another near the driver's side. Carl took this moment to avenge his brother. He got out of the car with a loaded gun, walked over to Officer Irby and shot him once in the head. After falling to the floor face down, Carl shot him two more times from behind. Carl then fled the scene on foot and did whatever he could to evade authorities. Seeing the murder was a security guard named Richard Castillo. He grabbed Officer Irby's gun and prevented John from leaving the scene until backup arrived. Carl attempted to steal a vehicle that was stopped at a stop sign by standing in front of the car and pointing his gun at the driver. The driver put his car in reverse in an attempt to get away, but Carl shot through the windshield, striking the driver in the arm. Some of the windshield glass broke off into the driver's eyes as well. Hearing and seeing the commotion, a peace officer walked towards Carl and demanded he stopped what he was doing. Carl shot the officer and ran off on foot again. 
When he reached a warehouse that was close by, he went inside and pointed his gun at the first employee he saw. The employee fled the warehouse, so Carl found another employee. When the second employee tried to flee, Carl chased them into the parking lot. Just as they were running out to the parking lot, the supervisor who was checking into work was pulling into the driveway and confronted Carl. Again, Carl pointed his gun at the supervisor and demanded he put his hands up, give him his wallet, and then get on the ground. After obtaining the items he requested, he hopped in the supervisor's vehicle and attempted to drive off. He was unable to drive off, though, because he did not know how to drive a standard transmission vehicle. He got out of the car and ran into a different building, but he was quickly apprehended by a police officer and arrested. While in custody, he refused to give police his name or any other important information about who he was. He did, however, lie and tell them he was diabetic and paralyzed. When he was taken to the police station for questioning, it was noted that he was uncooperative and mad at everyone. He also showed a lack of remorse for what he did. While being held in jail, Carl would threaten other inmates who inquired about why he was there. Sometimes, he would respond by saying he would kill them just like he killed the cop. When trial began, Carl remained emotionless and claimed that he was defending himself because Officer Irby pointed the gun at him first. The witness, Richard Castillo, testified in court, claiming that Officer Irby never drew his gun, let alone touched it. In 1991, Carl was officially sentenced to death. Over the next 22 years on death row, Carl's attorneys exhausted all appeals until finally the court granted Carl a sentencing retrial. The Texas Court of Appeals claimed that the original jury did not hear evidence about Carl's horrific childhood and it was pertinent information a jury should be able to hear. In addition to hearing information about Carl's childhood during the retrial, Carl's attorneys also brought up the fact that he was old in age and would be no danger to anyone if serving life in prison. Defense was prepared and had evidence stacked up against Carl. There was an expert who took to the stand, Dr. Mark Vegan. He was a mental health expert that brought up how Carl had a lifetime of prior prison sentences before he killed Officer Irby, so his age was irrelevant. It was also brought up that Carl was a member of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas prison gang, so he really was not opposed to staying on the right path. Dr. Vegan said that being involved in a prison gang causes a higher probability of prison violence. Lastly, the court was made aware of Carl's younger 65-year-old brother, Bobby. Although Bobby testified in court on behalf of his brother, he spent over 20 years in prison for killing three people. Since leaving prison, he claimed that he found God and became a deacon, but it did not stop the prosecution from sharing letters between the brothers while being locked up. In one letter, Carl claimed that he was glad that he would never be released from prison because he would hate to think about what he would do to certain people that have screwed him around. In another letter, Carl told his brother Bobby that if the district attorney questioned him about Bobby's criminal record, Bobby should just say that the district attorney made Bobby what he is today by sending him to prison on his first offense instead of giving him probation. He was quoted saying, If they create a monster, they should not complain when it feeds on society, right? Freaking right. Also, showing no remorse, in one letter, he called Officer Irby's widow a derogatory slur. While in court, waiting to hear his new sentence, Carl locked eyes with jurors and stared down the judge. The new jury unanimously voted that Carl be put to death again. They found no information included in the new trial that took away from his original crime and no information that would warrant him to be sentenced to life in prison. Carl is currently on death row at the Polunsky unit in Texas and his inmate number is 00000993. He was given an execution date of April 21st, 2022. Thank you all for watching another episode of Death Row Executions. Do you think Carl will actually be executed or do you think he will receive a last minute stay?